All right, what's up, shit nobody cares about enthusiasts? Cut is over, and if you look at the title, arms are still 17 inches. I have a very spurgy posing attempt there. A couple selfies, washed out because iPhone camera sucks. I'm actually like negative body fat percentage, but 17 inch arms. I told myself that this next bulk, I would shoot for 19 inch arms if my arms were still in the 17s because listen dude i'm obviously not going to gain two inches of arm muscle but we're fat maxing i'm taking this bulk to 220 as you can see from the chart got down to 180 and like i feel good i feel like i i've been maintaining this last week like this entire training week has been at maintenance calories and i've been feeling stronger i attempted a bit heavier on the first set of these it, it didn't go super well but it, it felt strong that that's what's important not actually being strong just feeling strong because i um yeah i don't really feel super fatigued at least i didn't this week for the most part later on in the week i started to feel fatigued and you'll see why but yeah i'm gonna be shooting for 19 inch arms trying my best because i just barely came shy of 18 last bulk i got to 17.95 on my highest weigh-in if i'm remembering correctly um or not highest weigh-in highest measurement uh like they grew a little bit during the time i was maintaining peak bulk but i am um, going for 19 inches because i'm fat maxing i came shy of 17.95 so i feel like to cross 18, I'm just, like, not going to mentally limit myself. And um, and then hopefully it should just come just like that. Congratulations to Basement Bodybuilding for beating me there and having way better quality of mass. You can see, like, I could, yeah, I could still get leaner. I'm, I have abs now, um, but, like, I'm not peeled. It just doesn't really matter because I don't think my FFMI is um i don't think my ffmi is just high enough to really bother with that kind of thing i have a buddy at the gym he was talking to me he was saying like yeah you, you're looking good you i think you could like still cut 10 more pounds and you'd be like really peeled and i agree like that's about how much more i think i'd have to go to be like single digit or whatever but it's just not worth it like i'm just not big or strong enough um like uh, so hypertrophy is more the goal of this bulk. I, I just want to get bigger. I have a couple lifts I'm focusing a bit more sh on strength on because you still... It's not like I'm trying to be fucking weak, nor am I like not trying to progress. Like You still have, you still have to progress. But um, I'm not really power building or that type of thing. Um, and yeah, I don't... I just, But I still don't think... Even if like... I don't it, even if I didn't care about performance, it's just not in my best interest to cut further. I'm just not that large, and I know that I have a, I could still gain a good amount of mass like this bulk, and it just feels like it would be a big waste to risk losing muscle, getting leaner, and all that. I um so I'm I'm comfortable with this body fat percentage. I feel like I'd even be comfortable if I gained more, ten more pounds of pure fat with how I look. So this is a point that I feel perfectly fine starting another bulk at. Because this is about the body fat percentage I started my last bulk at. And I gained almost 40 pounds in that bulk. I still think that I could uh, gain a good amount of weight of just quality mass. Interrupting that tangent, talk about these. This is a very goofy looking variation. The Zotman Meadows Curl. I admit, but, um, it just felt better. Like the, the stretch on my bicep when I pronate at the bottom, the way it fried my extensors, cause my extensor would actually fail during the eccentric. And like, just, I don't know, it just gave a really, hit my arm really nicely. It's better than the strict cannon curls. Like even if I wasn't doing the Zotman twisty bullshit, it, um, it felt, it was better than the cannon curls cause I don't want to stand and brace with that much weight. I'm holding more more than half my body weight 
in front of me. Like, I just don't want to do that. Sitting down felt better. Deadlift, five rep PR. Very easy right here. I'm just going to let it play out because I'm very proud of how this went. And fifth rep, I think I might have honestly had three RIR if I took it to absolute nose bleeding uh, RP10. I'm happy about that because, like, obviously, when I say that's a deadlift PR, that's it's not the most. I'd think maybe like it's. I don't think it's the absolute strongest I've been. It obviously, if you plug it in one or a max calculator, it doesn't go to um my PR of 585, but. For one, that uh, isn't accurate. Two, I wasn't going to failure. I don't really plan to take any of these to absolute RP10 for a long time. It's going to get heavier every wave, um, start heavier and heavier. And I don't know how long I'll be able to run the fives for, but it's already the plan to graduate to triples is already done. I'm hoping to get to 250 kilos for five before I have to do that. We will see, though. Uh, these pull-ups, they sucked ass. I I tried, like, doing a bit more ROM on the, um, on the body... Sorry, I got fucking distracted. On the body weight back down set, but, um... It just kind of cooked me, and that brings me into, because you're going to see later on in the video, my pull-ups suck ass again. Something I started doing uh, yesterday or the day before, no, the day before, I only took two months after finishing F-Bed to fall back into training something every day again. It's off cam though, but I am doing grease the groove on pull-ups. It's just... It's easy. Like, I have a pull-up bar in my house, in my garage, and it's... I don't know, sometimes I just need... Like, sometimes I just need mental stimulation. Like, I deleted Instagram and YouTube from my phone because I was just doom-scrolling too much and I need to lock in. So, I just... I don't know. I need I need something. I need, I need to do something. So, I've just been doing pull-ups, but I also am doing that because I need a... I need to not be shit at them. Like, I just swing around and my form falls apart and whatever and it's just it's terrible because i just i don't practice good reps when i'm doing my pull-ups i'm going to failure i get a lot of my reps the the intensity creeps up during the set and then the form gets shittier and so i'm just drilling shit technique and i dig myself in a deeper hole of just being shit up pull-ups which is really annoying because i i just feel like there's something to this exercise like if i can't do it well some my back is my best muscle group, so there has to be something wrong there and just some opportunity to gain by becoming good at it if I'm so bad. Like, does that make sense? Because it just feels like, what is my back missing that it, that it just can't do there? So I just, I just feel like I'll be better off with them than without them. But I started greasing the groove off cam. I'm not filming this shit. I, I don't give a fuck. Just, just know I'm doing it. Uh, I'm just doing one or two pull-ups with, like, good, like, clavicle to the bar now. I couldn't do that before, but only after a few days, like, I can actually get my clavicle to the bar, even with a wide grip. Um, and just holding it for a second or something, a rep or two, it'll become more reps eventually when that stops being, feeling, like, if when it feels like it'll be easy to do that. But, um... I'm doing that off cam. I'm also training my abs off cam because if you see in the pictures at the beginning, my I have poverty abs and I've already talked about before like why I was intentionally not training them because I didn't know, well, poverty abs, but they look kind of good in this shot. Um, I, I wanted a thin waist from the side relative to like my chest and upper back thickness and uh, like my arms to... Listen, getting arms as thick as your waist from the side, or at least thick in, in relation to it, is, is a lifetime pursuit. So I don't 
I'm not gonna keep my abs uh dyl tier forever just to uh not make my arms look too small but the um i do want my arms from the side thick in relation to my waist uh that's why i practice vacuum sometimes usually while posing and it's um it's something i was like worried about doing without seeing my physique while lean i needed to see what i what my proportions are like when i didn't have uh, all that fat and visceral fat giving me that nasty belly popping out the crop top i um i'm happy with my proportions like every everything that at this point bugs me about my proportions from the side is not anything with my waist being too big it's with my chest being brutally underdeveloped uh pause that this one well here and um that's these were about as hard as i could do i know it doesn't look like i really slowed down too much at the end but it was just this shit was fucking hard man i um i'm happy with them though i feel like when i have more calories in me i'll be able to do the amount of volume written on the spreadsheet from start to finish of the block without really any issues it'll pretty much get to the intensity it has to be and no higher but what the fuck was i talking about i was saying something about my proportion shit nobody cares about but yeah i i need a bigger chest not a more emaciated core so i feel fine hitting more abs now and like i'm doing ghd setups usually just as like a, a warm-up when I get into the gym, just as part of like my stretching shit, I just do like one set. I'm doing them weighted because uh, like I'm not fluff and pumping it. I'm still trying to o progressively overload it, but I'm not thinking about it too much. I'm not even writing it on my training log. It's just part of my warm up. That's that way. It just ensures I don't skip it. Um, but as far as yeah, my pull ups go. Already, technique is improving. In the couple of days after the uh, after the final session in this video, because I'm I'm posting this a day late, I'm recording this a day late. I was editing yesterday, but I want to get to bed early because, as far as like outside the gym stuff goes, I need to walk in. Like I already talked about this in the last video, I used to make good money, and I hate having to say I used to this, I used to that. I hate um. I hate knowing that like I fell off in that regard because you know I, I became obsessed with this other part of my life because I, I it was in lockdowns I didn't have gym access I didn't uh and I, I wasn't going to school because lockdowns were going on so I only focus on that now I'm trying to make the gym consume less of my life I'm trying to make diet consume less of my life so i bought all the meal prep shit yesterday that i need i'm gonna need for this bulk which starts in a week and um i yeah I, I just i need to lock in i deleted all distractions youtube's not even on my phone like i said i have youtube studio so i can still see comments but uh i all devices i'm out of instagram just social media i deleted twitter because it's just full of scammers and i um yeah I, I i need to lock in that's just everything i can say comes down to that i just need to lock in and that's not mental masturbation or like me just saying fucking platitudes i've already completely mapped out my weekly schedule that's flexible in that i have one day slot time slot in on one day of the schedule where i then am able to map out the next week's schedule if it needs changes but everything is for the week planned out to basically the minute of when i'm allowed to do shit currently i'm running like a beta version of it where it's not as extreme i'm the major parts of my day i'm still doing to the minute that i have to but like work on this work on that i'm more just in that time doing whatever i want like like i'll have work on school but i haven't started my um 
online course that starts in a week. So I'm just editing the video right now. And then another slot, I just have grind written. Um, that's just because it's kind of vague as far as what I'm going to do. What I used to do for money is no longer a viable option. Um, and so I need to figure out something else. I have ideas. I'm not going to talk about them. I don't really give a shit to talk about on here. That's just my shit that I'm doing. I'm speaking about it in relation, I guess, to how it affects how how my outside the gym and training life is interacting synergistically. But in that time slot, also, I'm just editing the shit. Oh, fuck. I'm glad I that reminded me of this. I am going to. Well, first, I'll say after I hit that 220 kilo for five deadlift and overall, just seeing my arms are still 17 inches and shit and just my physique being pretty happy with it as of late it obviously for one i'm not that fucking big for two i'm not that lean for three i'm not that strong for four i have muscular proportional weaknesses that need work but five way bigger and way stronger than i used to be and it's in a time frame that i'm pretty happy with uh quite ha as for the deadlifts very happy with even for the arms, I'm very happy with because I think my arms are like fucking high 13 inches when I started this channel. They were small. And even at 17 inches, they don't look particularly large at all because six feet tall and I have deadlifter arms. But it'll fill out in time, so I'm not too worried about that. The whole point is just adding those inches on. So I'm still as i reflect more on f bed and shit particularly just like the deadlifts and shit and like how my back has grown too i'm very proud of that i'm very proud that i stuck to that for a thousand days uh I, I i feel less ashamed or embarrassed the way i did by the end where i was like man i just can't believe i'm fucking doing this good riddance but once the dust has settled and i've had time to sleep sleep i've had time to sleep <laughs> I sleep eight hours a night or more every night, and I've not done any all-nighters since then. It's it's amazing. But uh, now I have time to reflect on it and recover and, like, just train in a more sustainable way. I, I'm, I'm happy that I, like, I'm proud of what I did. So I am going to make a thousand-day video. It won't be a thousand days of full body every day. Um, it'll, I'm thinking just, like, a thousand days of deadlifting every day just to focus on the one thing that is worth um being proud of like a thousand days of benching every day did shit all for me a thousand days of squatting every day like did i really did i really well like sure i did i did the movement pattern i loaded 70 kilos on my wait, interrupting myself these fucking sucked i tried doing them unilaterally uh just because it's the last day before the bulk, or the last week before the bulk, I'm fucking around to see techniques on things, and um, this sucked ass, I'm just gonna keep doing the bilaterally, but um, what I was saying, what the fuck was I saying, <laughs> oh god damn it, um, I just know I was talking something about the thousand days of deadlifting every day, like, yeah, squatting every day, by like 500 days in the spirit of it was already gone i was sandbagging my squats all the time now i'm living out my punishment for it by uh doing the reverse nordic and gel press superset but i i um yeah i i just want to focus on the deadlift aspect of it and like how it grew and like the back gains or whatever just to just to the, what I'm proud of, right? Because there's no point showing off just something like average or mediocre. That was just a stupid idea. But I am genuinely proud of that. It inspires me that I did it. When I remember that that's something I did, I am inspired by it. And it's... um, Nobody else is going to fucking do it. I don't think anyone else has done it. I don't think, yeah, anyone else will ever do it. That's kind of just one thing I have to myself that I can at least say I did. That was difficult and uh that i have something to show for as well and uh, so yeah that video is going to come out but um i i'm going to work on it this week in those slots where normally i'd be working on school or trying to 
get some fucking money and stop being an incel and touch grass. But, yeah, I, until this deload weekends that I'm running right now, and I start bulking, I'm just going to work on the video in that time. RDLs kind of suck today. I'm going to actually talk about the training footage now for this last session because this is the only session of, I think, the entire cut where I had to actually, like, go off program. RDLs sucked. I was weak. Um, I had a very bad day on this day, like, outside the gym that made the gym suck. It wasn't neuroticism. It's like something measurably really shitty happened to me that is absolutely nothing I can't get, like right back up from but is fucking like extremely consequentially bad uh that's that's about the most i'll share it was it was like for for most people i don't i i cannot ever say like, this isn't me just being neurotic like like yeah it usually is like this was really bad and if i said it on video i think my mom would have a heart attack but we're good like i don't know just keep moving forward it's fine but I was in a bad mood on this day, so I, um, pull-up sucked. This is the particular set that inspired me to just start greasing the groove. I just did some pull-ups to make up for the fact that I was just skipping my back volume, because after the RDLs were shit and, like, the pull-ups were shit, and it was way too late, because I was just dooming really hard, and I got to the gym late, I, uh, I just left early, like my phone was dying too, and I decided it was for the best, and it did end up being for the best, because I went to bed earlier, and now I'm waking up earlier, I need to, my, I have to, because it's written, and I'm gonna do what's written, it's written that I have to go to bed every night at 9pm, uh, because I want to wake up early as fuck, and, um, yeah, I want to get to bed early, and, I'm currently going to bed at 11 p.m. because I chose to uh, cut this session short. So it did end up being for the best, but I, um, yeah, I just, I, I need that 9 p.m. 9 p.m. bedtime, like kind of 5 to 7 a.m. wake up time. I, I give myself a pretty big room for error before I have to do anything in the day that's written down because I don't sleep well if I feel like, I don't fall asleep well if I feel like, like my seconds are counting. Like, if, if I'm counting seconds in my mind, like, holy shit, I need to fall asleep. Why am I not asleep yet? Why am I not asleep? I can't fall asleep. That's one thing I learned about doing with the insomnia I used to deal with. It was very anxiety-based with the anxiety revolving around whether or not I'll sleep because obviously, like, for lifting, sleep is really important. So I I don't want to lose it. And, um... And yeah, the longer it takes, the more that ramps up, and it's a negative feedback loop. <sighs> Fuck it, I'll go on a rant about insomnia, because some viewers of mine deal with it sometimes too, so maybe I'll pick up something useful from this uh, completely otherwise useless yapping. But things I learned to deal with insomnia was that, like, making sure that my bedtime... Okay, so when they say go to bed at the same time every night, it doesn't mean have the same sleep schedule every night. I think that's one thing people kind of misunderstand because this is shit fucking normie advice for neurotypicals that have no internal monologue and don't have thoughts to even keep them awake at night. But for fucking, for patricians like myself and of course anyone watching this channel if like it just it's it's shit advice the way it's usually presented the um just go to bed and wake up at the same time every night don't wake up at the same time every day but go to bed at the same time every night i because i would not condone losing sleep i feel like for a lot of people obviously you can only control so much about your schedule if you have a job and you have school and shit, like, it can be really hard to, like, you're not always going to be in the position where you can't set really stringent alarms, or, like, you you need to wake up exactly a minute, eight hours at the, at the latest after, like, if you're really still trying to get your sleep, like, I understand that, like, a lot of people are going to be in a situation where you can't just give yourself those extra hours of wiggle room, but 
if you can, it's ideal because if you get to bed at the same time every night, if you are like me where you where sometimes it takes an hour or more to fall asleep after turning off all the lights and just getting in bed and not checking your phone, not looking at the clock, just laying there, then um you can still kind of rest easy knowing that you will you might not be waking up your by by an alarm because being w- woken up by an alarm fucking sucks. It sucks f- mentally, you feel like shit, but also just physiologically it's not good. If you're woken up by an alarm, that's not normal. Your body doesn't want to do do that. There's a reason the alarm had to wake you up and you didn't wake up. It's because you needed more sleep. So I uh I am giving myself currently a three and a half hour room for error. Like, I know that's really extreme, but, like, I struggle a lot with my, uh, with falling asleep. So, I, I just need that amount of time. I can afford it. Um, it does mean that once my day starts, things are very back-to-back, and there isn't really room for me to just do whatever the fuck I want. Like, no, I, I, I cannot, I'm not gonna show the routine yet, I'll show it in a future video, but, um, just cause like, I still don't know if some things are going to be possible to do every day and I'm not showing it for anyone to fucking replicate. It's very, it's a bit, it's a bit like almost psychotic in terms of just how I don't give my, for instance, there's no room for hanging out with anyone. There's no room for just any social life or whatever. And you might call that extreme, but like I used to make money. I cannot, like, overstate that, like, whatever you think I was making, it's more. And so, how did I get that? I had this crazy fucking manic break when um, uh, the lockdowns happened. And I just, for six months minimum, it, it cooled down in terms of, like, the mania or whatever. But I still kept the work ethic going. Just not as self-destructive. But for six months, I was sleeping only every second night. This isn't some, like, Elon Musk entrepreneur fucking hustle culture Instagram quote. Uh, Entrepreneur will work 80 hours a week to avoid working 40 hours. This wasn't some shit like that, but I was... it was I was just possessed to just lock in and just obsessively work on this shit because I just... I'm, I'm a very... I think you can tell from this channel I'm an obsessive person. I don't think I need to explain that. I think... That's kind of one of the most obvious things about me. And, um, and this might, but this schedule kind of being as tight and stringent as it is, is a way to try and put like reins on that. Because if I can, I just know that if I put the amount of obsession and time I have in lifting and like I replicate a less self destructed version of the way I used to work, which is like not sleeping every second night. If you saw my driver's license photo that I was taking back then you think I'm 10 years older than I am now but um the um just yeah no no self-destructive behavior this time but a lot more uh just like locking myself in because I don't want to get too hyper focused on something else and then it takes away from other things like there's been days where I tried to get back into working on shit and then, um, and then it, I ended up getting to the gym late cause I sat down for like seven hours when I was supposed to only work for like two minutes. And then like, holy shit, I have to get to the gym late. And then I, uh, I lose time and my sleep schedule gets ruined. Like this happened a couple times during F bed. I just didn't talk about it, but that's what caused some of those days where my sleep schedule would go to shit because I try, I thought I had time and then I didn't because I didn't know how to control myself. So this is why it's like me becoming very inhuman in the way I'm kind of, I'm functioning. I'm going out early now to the gym where there isn't going to be really be any of my friends. Cause it's not that I don't want to see my friends. It's that I do want to see my friends at the gym. I want to see my friends at the gym. I want to talk to my friends at the gym, but I can only be there so long. So if they're there, like the, the, Motive, the discipline throughout the session is going to chip away. I'll pause my music like once for like one small thing throughout the session. And like that is the boundaries breaking. And then all of a sudden, like, even if it's 10 minutes that I lose to talking or something, like by little, little moments of exchanges, I can't do that. I don't have time because of the other shit now that I'm trying to do that is not the gym. And so it's 
it's not something I'm trying to glorify. I don't think it's, uh, I don't, I don't like, I, I, I can't overstate like that this isn't some hustle bro Andrew Tate shit where I'm really jacking myself off over how antisocial I can be and just like only care about trying to financially develop myself. But it's just what I feel like I need because I know it's something I'm capable of. I've had success with in the past of just like operating on very robotic levels and like if it works it works right like i i don't really need to um i don't know i like when i think of like where i'll be like five years from now if i don't do it versus if i do as long as i mean i don't want to i don't know i just feel like i'll be better off if i do i'll have a better future long term ever since fbed ended i've been thinking more about this stuff and I, um, yeah, so I'm trying to make the gym as locked in as possible. Meal prep is that specific. I have one day of the week where I'm going to meal prep all my food. Um, and then for the whole week, I all put in fucking containers and shit. Times a day when I have to eat these meals. Amount of time these meals are allowed to take for me to eat. Uh, no watching YouTube while eating. This is not just me saying what I'm doing. This is a command to you. If you're, if you're fucking in a position in life where you need to be focusing on something else, like where you need time, say you're in school, right? You, you should be fucking studying. It's summer, so that's unlikely. Um, or, you know, you're, you have a job and you have only so much time after you're, uh, your job and shit and you should be going to the gym but you're you're not you're sitting there eating taking twice as long as you would because you're watching oscar swider's stupid fucking training log just call this video and just just finish your food i i'm speaking really to just the distracted people people that are like me anytime i'm fucking speaking to directly like that commandingly it's just anyone that's as much of a dumbass as me Turn off YouTube and go to bed early. Turn off YouTube and eat your food. Don't do shit while... Don't rely on YouTube or music or something to do menial tasks. Because that's something I've relied on a lot. I, I, I couldn't clean my fucking room without my headphones in. Listening to Sam Sheether talk about deadlift accessories or something. Like, I, I needed something. And I just... You just don't. You don't need that. I don't need that. Like, once you just... Say, okay, I'm going to do this at this time. It's going to take this long. And I'm not going to watch YouTube while eating or whatever this is. It just, it's it's like it takes half the time or a third of the time. I used to take two hours to eat like fucking eggs in the morning. And now it takes me 15 minutes. It's just completely. Listen, I know this sounds really stupid because I, I can't oversee that. Like, I. I'm a very obsessive and like person. I I when I do things, it's not conventionally, and that's not for better or for worse. It, it it can be for better if I use it correctly, and it can be often for worse as it mostly has been. But I just like for me, I just know that it's been three years. I've been trying to just balance things through going by feel of like okay i'll just try not to take too much time to do this i'll try not to take two hours to fucking shower and do my hair and whatever i'll just try not to make these things take so long and it just never works it never works and i am done just going by feel because something is happening when i go by feel that i can't even measure that just isn't happening when i'm going by strict rules so that's why i'm doing it this way it's not like me romanticizing the idea that like oh i'm so fucking locked in dude i'm like I'm a fucking sigma i mean even though i am i am a sigma but <laughs> i uh i'm i'm not trying to rom romanticize or promote being like a fucking anti-social uh hustle bro or some shit but i just it's worked for me before, and I want to make it work for me again.
because I don't have $10 million and it's really, really bad. That's really bad for me. If you, if you don't have $10 million, that's fine. I still respect you, but I don't respect myself if I don't have $10 million. So yeah, I think I spent more or almost as time in, as much time in this video talking about lifting as I did shit that has nothing to do with lifting, but it, a lot of the changes I've made in my life in related in relation to my training and the way I do my gym related practices revolves around stuff outside the gym because I want to focus more on that. I want to, I, I want to be the honor student I could be like, I, I used to be a really good student, fucking straight A's, it's shit, but, like, and I know how to do it, I know how to study, but I just, I've been fucking training full body every day for a thousand days, and spending eight hours in the gym to train arms because I didn't time my rest, it's okay to time your rests, if you, if you, if it helps you save time, just time your rest, you don't have to fucking... Don't listen to all the YouTubers that tell you that going by feel is gonna kill your not going by feel is gonna kill your gains. But um I yeah, I I I I want to be good at things. Like I don't just want just want to focus on the gym and shit. I I wanna be good at everything I do. But I don't wanna do too many things. Just just important things. And I I wanna be good at them. Because I know I can be. Like just just as obsessive a person as I am, I can walk in on anything and I can do well at it. But I just, yeah, I I don't. I haven't been, and that's the problem, and that needs to change. So I'm just thinking of if, if there's anything I wanted to talk about before I end the video. Um, oh right, yeah, I I want to talk about this. I'm so my membership at this gym expires in November. Because it's a prepaid for a year. You can look forward to, for those that love seeing the garage gym, another garage gym arc. I'll probably spend six months in the winter in the garage. Just, there might be a couple upgrades, but it'll be a lot of just basic barbell movements and shit. That can usually get me by. I have barbells, dumbbells. I'll be able to like buy like the bells of steel cable or whatever and just work with that. Um, So that gets me... Yep, today film I am video. I can't even tell you guys. That was me talking to my dad, but I um yeah, so that can get me by just enough. Like I already know how I'd modify my current training structure slightly to accommodate it, and it, it would be fine. It wouldn't be that difficult, and it would be fun. Like it, it would be easier to lock in because I don't have to commute anymore, and it would also. Like, I, I kind of miss it sometimes, the garage gym. Just doing the pause deadlifts in the morning in there is always really nice. Um, it's just, a, it's a nice gym. Like, it's a very good garage gym. I should spend more time there, so I'm going to in the future. For this bulk, everything's finalized, though. It, 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 this bulk, the, ex, these, this program, because I'm doing it in, like, blocks. So, obviously, like, once I finish the six weeks, I can change it. But, um... It's locked in now, for real this time. I know I said it last time, but I didn't hit the cutting target that I want, wanted to. And, um, and I had to extend my training week a bit longer. That did let me hit that deadlift milestone that I wanted. So I'm happy. End of cut, that puts me at a really good starting point for my strength on deadlifts. I think I'll be in the mid-sixes. Like, in, give me a couple months I should be unconventional, which excites me a lot. But um, I... Yeah, I... I'm locked in now. The the Zotman curl shit was the final change. Like again, it's a goofy looking curl. I understand like it's a bit gimmicky. It's kind of like it's sort of similar to doing something like an Arnold press or whatever, where it's just a bit weird. Like it's just doing a lot of things well. Like I like it. I it completely fried my non bicep elbow uh, flexors while still being limited by the bicep on the. Con Holy shit. I just had an alarm go off, and I would have killed myself if uh, if that deleted the recording. If it was a, if I was recording a video, that would have deleted the recording because that was forty minutes. But um, it uh, oh, that's really long. I'm gonna make the video. We know I can make the video. I can't change the video now to um, 
I was going to slow down some of the footage from eight times speed to slower to accommodate how long I'm talking for, but I, uh, I can't do that because then it wouldn't line up with my observations of the footage, but whatever, I, I'm just going to keep talking. What was I talking about? <laughs> Fuck. Oh yeah. The, the Zotman curls. The, cause you know, you know, I, I, I used to gesture max and whatever on the leg, leg extension to grow my wrist extensors and that was a good exercise but like for mul like granted I haven't isolated my extensors in a long time so it might just be that but they were just completely fucked up in a quick you know it was hard to do things with my hands the day of and the multiple days after like typing on a keyboard was difficult because like I moving my fingers was hard because my extensors felt so weak I didn't like have hand coordination there's something to that and like as far as growing the biceps so it, it it felt like it hit my bicep just as well as like the strict cannon curls did so it's it's not like i feel like i was really losing anything so if i'm not really losing anything i'm just gaining like i felt a better stretch on my bicep i feel like i'm i you know the stretch mediated hypertrophy stuff is fucking listen i was big on that like way before it was cool okay Quit ego lifting on crock rows, uh, deadlifting every day. Do you know I started deadlifting every day because I thought it would grow my traps, and it did. Uh, that's what that was the only hypertrophy outcome I expected was a thicker back. I didn't expect it to be the best for hamstrings because it has no eccentric or whatever. I didn't give a shit. I just knew if I deadlift every day, the stretch is gonna give me a thicker back. It it did. Like I was way on this shit like back when it was like still niche when like fucking. Alex was getting clowned on for his rack pulls, but I was I was watching. I'm like, no, this guy's on to something. This guy knows what he's talking about. And um, yeah, no, I I don't see why I wouldn't apply to other muscle groups. I think now people are having a reactionary kind of knee jerk reaction to it, a, re a reactionary reaction. But uh, they're getting kind of mad because they're just hearing it everywhere. Length and partial this, length and partial that, and if we limit it, like you can't really progress well on them because you can't standardize them well so it, it makes progression really like esoteric and hard to quantify but um it's it's good like uh the, the stretch is fucking important i can definitely say from like how it's grown my triceps focusing on particularly the long head focusing on stretch beat biased movements it's good so getting a better stretch on an exercise i I will happily take that, especially if I'm not sacrificing very important things like just overload ability and tension and shit to get there. I'll take it. So it feels better when I supinate at the bottom on my bicep, stretches more. And uh, concentric, I'm using my bicep by, uh, I think I said supination before I meant pronation. I'm supinating on the concentric, using my bicep to curl it up. Yeah, it's it's a it's a good fucking exercise. It's also like what... Arnold did between like ages 13 and 19 to get to 19 inch arms. I think he also did D ball, but I don't think that matters. I think it's more the Zobman curls. I think, I think that's what got him there. So it should be what gets me to 19 inches. And if it's not something else fucking will, cause we're getting it. We're getting 19 inches this bulk. They will be fat steps, but they will measure 19 and they will look mildly big because my arms are so long, but yeah, that's, I think, that's everything I wanted to talk about, and I'm gonna go watch Death Note with my dad, because even though he's, like, an old Polish man, he's he's still cool with that, like, he, he enjoys it, so I'm gonna go do that, because this is the last kind of normal leisure time I can have. That's not true. I'll be reading every night before bed to avoid screen time and wind down. But um, this is some of this is some of the last media consumption I'll be able to do before then this bulk starts and I have to leave humanity behind and just go completely robotic. So yeah, I'm done. I'm, I'm gonna go do that and then go to bed at nine p.m. And, um, and if you're still listening to this, comment, um, your gel routine so that I know that you're 
one of the real shit nobody cares about enthusiasts and not any of these fakes. So, um, because the video, we got like 5% or 5 minute audience retention last time. And dude, I spoke for like, with almost a half hour. So, like, a lot of y'all are fake fans. <laughs> just, just saying. Uh, so yeah, comment that. I'll give my joke routine in the future. And I'll also drop the skincare routine in the future. Because one person asked. And I've been feeling like like super perfect lately. So I'll drop that too. For the shit nobody cares about enthusiasts. But yeah, I'm done. I'm going to go do watch Death Note. And, uh, and sleep. And sleep. I love sleeping. I hate all-nighters. I love sleeping.